Habitat 67 is now over 40 years old. For new habitats to flourish, the original vision must evolve. We have to make it more efficient, more affordable. We have to also make it able to deal with the greatest densities you find in the mega cities of the world that evolved in the last 40 years, like Hong Kong, Singapore, Manhattan, Shanghai. Here are four designs for 21st century habitats, embracing new efficiencies and adaptability while preserving the openness and livability of Habitat 67. The magic of study one is that you have this level of comfort that you're not in some kind of a mega scale building. It might be 15 or 18 stories high, but it's got that sense of scale of the village. If you lived on a kind of a steep hill with projections out of the rocks that formed gardens and terraces, that is what study one is like, cliff dwellings in the city. We wanted to find the balance between a more efficient structure that stacks more vertically without losing the quality of gardens in the air. This is taking townhouses, mid-rise apartment buildings, and giving them uplifting quality of life and even higher densities than they now achieve. Study number two offers what seems to me for the first time credible community spaces in the air. The first layer is made up of offices and the second layer is made primarily of apartments. The street that weaves in between them, say on the 25th floor, would accommodate gymnasiums, health clubs, spas, amenity shopping, outdoor spaces, swimming pools, serving both the community who lives above and the working community who works below. Study 2 forms great urban windows, 20 stories high and 150 feet across. It connects one part of the city to another part of the city, or the city with a view of the sea in a giant urban way. It is a city in the full sense of the word. Study number three is almost in the realm of creating artificial landscape. We step the building back like a ziggurat, like a man-made pyramid, like a hillside without the hill. Living on a hillside, you have a sense of openness, a sense of well-being of being out in nature. By framing these curved hillsides with great A-frames, we're able to do a series of curvilinear hillsides that could be 25 or 30 stories high. The roof forms one continuous serpentine promenade, landscaping that with uh, trees, shade, playgrounds, swimming pools, provides for an amazing facility up in the air, open to the view, totally magical. Study three is very suited to tropical and subtropical environments because it provides this urban environment that's shady, as if you're walking in a forest under trees, filtering the light coming through, giving you the sense of comfort, of shade and coolness. In study four, we open up new possibilities in a much bolder way of hillsides leaning against each other. Study four is rhomboids, A-frames, bridges, slab buildings, shopping promenades, all coming together into one complex being. Study four is a three-dimensional urban landscape taken to the extreme. It anticipates technologies that are not yet with us. It shows you what might be possible in a decade or two. As we started building skywards, we seem to over time have given up much of the quality of life that we dream about. The dream is still the Garden of Eden the place of paradise, of well-being, the place of nature. The challenge of habitats is to demonstrate that that sense of well-being of the garden of openness of nature can be achieved in a much denser urban environment. 
And our goal for the 21st century is to recreate the Garden of Eden in the multi-level city in the sky.